Hello, in this tutorial we're going to show how to use VGOV Pro or Aspire to design and engrave a brass plaque such as this solicitor sign that we have here displayed in the three-dimensional view. We're going to show how to lay out the, the template for the sign and then add the text, how to edit the text and then proceed to calculate engraving toolpaths. We're going to start by creating a new file, so file new. We don't want to save the old changes. We specify the size of the material that we're going to be engraving. So let's say we've got a piece that's six inches long by two inches high. And if it's a piece of brass, it's not going to be very thick. Let's say an eighth of an inch thick. We want the origin to be in the bottom left hand corner. Z0 is on the material surface and click OK. So in the two dimensional view, we have our piece of material that's six inches long and it's two inches high and it's an eighth of an inch thick. So we're going to start by adding some text here. So in the in both Aspire and VCarve Pro, under the Create Vectors section on the Drawing tab, we've got two text entry modes. So we can draw text. If we click this option, we can lay the text out at a specific text height. Or if we use the second option, we can get the software to automatically scale the size of the text to fit into the either the material size or if we have a vector selected for the text to fit inside the selected vector geometry. I'm going to use the second option, so fit text, where it says fit text within a vector box. If there's nothing selected, it will use the extents of the material. So here we're going to enter the, the name for, the, for this sign. So we're going to start with the Wilkinson's and co. We can now select a font so any true type fonts that you have installed on the PC will automatically become available inside the list when adding or editing text. Let's use a, uh, a fairly interesting text let's say T for Times Roman let's say Times Roman make it a bold Times Roman we want it centered in our place and we just want what we call normal margins. If we say no margins and apply, the text is scaled to fit the exact dimensions of our, our six inch plate. If I say normal and apply, we get a, a border either side. If we say a, a wide margin, then we get a bigger margin, twice the size, but the text is then smaller. Let's go with a normal margin, so click and apply. That's added our, our first set of text. Let's add the a second line to this so I'm going to say okay we're going to this is a group of solicitors so I'm going to press the caps lock S-O-L-C-I-T-O-R-S so and apply you'll see that the solicitors text has been added so we've got multiple lines of text here now let's um, let's also add the the address for the for the uh, the business so we could we could type in the address here, but that would be quite long. Um, we can also open a larger edit window. So here's the text that we're working with. Now, a very good tip here is to, if somebody's emailed their details to you, is to copy and paste the information into either this window or into the edit text window. So if I, I'm going to just drag over a little notepad window here. This is the information that's been sent to us for this company. Uh, it's been emailed, so I'm going to say copy and paste. So Control C, click into the window, and Control V. So we've pasted the text in. So we should know that this is going to fit. This is exactly the the correct text for the uh, for the company that we're, we're doing the plaque for, and uh, there shouldn't be any mistakes. Now, if we say OK, you'll see that the text turns up in the uh, in the auto layout text window. If we say apply. Now what you'll see is that the everything has been scaled down to fit inside the boundary that we've uh, that be or sorry the six inch diameter piece of material that we've been working with. Now this isn't really what we want because we want the the Wilkinsons and Co solicitors to be quite large. So what I'm going to do is let's go back to the edit text window. Let's just Control X or right hand mouse button cut. So we take that text away click OK, now apply, so the text has been fitted back to 
back onto our plaque to the required size I'm going to say close the form let's just nudge this text up a little bit so I'm using the arrow keys and this time I'm going to use the the first text op text option so draw text if we delete that sorry let's do that again no text selected we'll say draw text to a certain height Control V to put the address back in this time we specify the height instead of asking the software to automatically scale the, the text for us I'm going to say we want the text characters to be 120 thousandths high we want them to be centered and we can click approximately where I want the text to go you'll notice here that the anchor point has been picked up uh, from the cursor click the text has been added and click close so now we've added the smaller text along the bottom but I could have clicked anywhere and that text could be positioned anywhere on the on the plaque so if I click to select the text and then use the alignment tool so here we can say align centrally let's just check that the other text is also aligned centrally that's correct okay um, just going to move the large text up a touch using the arrow keys now we could do this interactively using the the the, uh, the the mouse and the cursor simply click twice we get the little handles here and we can move the text wherever we want it to go so I'm going to click it down let's say we want the text to approximately be there let's align it centrally like so okay next I'm just going to draw a very simple rectangle around the outer boundary of our plate and we're going to use that for adding a chamfer later on so I'm going to say create a rectangle draw a rectangle we want the bottom left hand corner to be at zero zero and we want the size of this um, rectangle to be six inches by two inches and apply close the form and if we click on the edge there you'll see the little dotted lines indicating that we've now got a vector if we say enter node edit you'll see that we've got a vector control Z going around the boundary of our our sign or our plaque letter F on the keyboard to fit so we can see and the right hand mouse button two clicks to go back into selection mode okay we're now ready to engrave this uh, this sign so we're going to swap from the drawing tab on the left hand side of the screen to the toolpath tab on the right hand side so if we use the option to swap to the toolpath tab as always we recommend that you always check your material settings so eighth inch plate Z0 on the surface we want the cutter to retract let's say 100 thousandths so 0 0.1 of an inch when it's moving from one letter to the next letter and after cutting we'll get it to retract an inch above the plate click OK We're going to use the engraving toolpath option. So this is often referred to as V-carving, but it's exactly the same for an engraving toolpath. So we'll say engrave. We're going to engrave to a depth. Let's make the uh, the text typically would it would be quite shallow. So maybe 20 or 30 thousandths deep. Let's say we're going to engrave it 25 thousandths deep. Select a cutter. Here in the tool database, this is where our cutters are stored. So we've got different cutters, end mills, bornos, V-bits, engraving cutters, etc. And we can add our own cutter um, cutter groups to this, or we could say, okay, we have a cutter here that's 20 degree with a 20 thousandths tip on the bottom, and that might be okay for the job that we're doing. Let's make a a copy of this tool bath, um, sorry, a copy of this tool with a smaller tip instead of a 20 thousandths tip because we got some very fine text here let's make a copy of the of the the tool but with a smaller tip a smaller flat tip diameter so i'm going to click on the copy tool here we get a duplicate copy of our tool i can change these parameters so we'll make it give it a title engrave 20 degree but instead of 20 thousandths i'm going to give it a, a 4 thousandths flat tip diameter so quarter inch diameter 20 degree side angle so half angle with a flat tip of four thousandths of an inch specify the the step overs for the engraving application uh, also 
specify the engraving spindle speed and the cutting feed rates when it's actually in the material and the plunge feed rates. Click the apply button and you'll see that the name's been updated in the list here. So we have our new engraving tool added to our tool database that we can access at any time in the future. So let's click OK to use that or select and use that cutter. So now we just simply click and drag to select the text that we wish to engrave. Let's give this a meaningful name. So we'll call this engrave text. Oh, caps lock is on. So engrave text, click calculate. The three dimensional view has been opened. So we can click and twiddle with the right hand mouse button. We can push and pull with the right hand mouse button to zoom in or out or we can pan using the left and the right together so moving around so we can move and then push with the right hand mouse button to zoom in pull with the right mouse button to zoom out if we get into a bit of a pickle so we 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 twiddle and we've lost the orientation for the uh, for the preview we can use the standard view options in the top right hand corner so view isometric view and now we can push a pull to zoom in or out so here we've got our engraved text tool and we can preview this tool path. You'll see that the tools being drawn showing what the cutter is going to produce uh, when, it, when it engraves into the material. If we zoom in, you can take a closer look at the preview. You can see that it's picking out some very, very fine and crisp detail for us. We can change or experiment with different materials. So we could say, okay, instead of a piece of brass, let's say we're going to cut this out of a, a piece of uh, piece of steel. So change the material. We we'll also change the the fill color. So instead of it being a red, let's say it's a sort of a bluish color. Let's say a darker blue. Like so. We could save this image, but before we save the image, what I'm going to do is calculate the chamfer toolpath just to finish off the plaque. So to do that, we're going to say close. Let's go back to the to the 2D view. It's, well, in fact, instead of going back to the 2D view, I'm going to say tile the, the windows horizontally. So we can see the 3D view in the bottom window and the the vector or the, the sign layout in the top two-dimensional window. Now let's go to the toolpath tab on the right. Select the outer rectangle vector. This time we're going to use a, a profiling toolpath. So create profile. We're going to run the tip of the cutter on the selected line. Let's say we need we're going to cut this. Remember the plates an eighth of an inch thick. Let's say we're going to cut to a depth of say forty thousandths, so 0 0.04. Select the cutter. This time we're going to use a uh, a V bit or a different type of engraving cutter. Let's say we use a our quarter inch bit with a 60 degree side angle. Calculate the toolpath. This is now profile machined around the outer edge of our, our sign. If we preview this toolpath, you'll see that we've added a little a little beveled chamfer. Let's make it a little bit deeper. So double click to edit. Let's give it a better name. So we'll call it chamfer. And we'll, instead of 40 thousandths deep, we'll make it 60 thousandths deep and calculate, preview the results, and we get a bigger edge chamfer around our, our plaque. When we're happy with the piece and we wish to show that to a client or a customer, we can maximize the view, like so. We can save the image, so we can say, save the preview image, save this as a JPEG or a, a bitmap file and email it or print it and show it to the clients. Say close. We can also estimate the cutting time or the engraving time. So estimate the engraving time. And based on the, the speeds and feeds that we've specified, it probably take about 25 minutes to engrave this plaque. Let's go back and tile the views again. So view tile horizontally. So far we've engraved the text into our piece of material. So the text is re recessed into the material. There may be a, a, a situation where you wish to engrave 
the text to be raised so you wish to machine away the background material and leave the text raised to do that I'm going to select our outer boundary click twice you'll see that we get the transformation handles I'm going to just drag this handle in slightly so click on the click with the left mouse button hold the shift key down and you'll see symmetrically it scales the rectangle in so let's say scale it by that and we'll do this the same vertically so shift key just drag like so okay let's just nudge the the address up a little bit like so now we could we could change the, the complete size of this so click and drag click a second time click and hold the on the top right hand corner holding the shift key we can change the size of the of the sign or the text in the sign okay so we'll engrave it slightly different size this time so now we're going to machine the background material away and leave the text raised so to do that we'll go back and use our originally engraved text um, toolpath so double click to edit alternatively we can click the edit toolpath icon and so we're going to engrave it to a flat depth we'll make it slightly deeper we'll make it 40 thousandths deep we'll use the small uh, very pointed 20 degree cutter to to machine the detail around the small letters but because we've got some large areas to clear out I'm going to tell the software we wish to use a slightly bigger cutter to remove the stock material so use flat area engraving clearance tool select the cutter let's go back and look at our engraving tool the engraving bits that we've got set up and for this uh, application I'm going to use the same angle with a, a 20 the 20 thousandths flat on the bottom so select now we could edit that cutter we could say edit we, instead of using a flat of 20 thousandths let's make the flat say 40 thousandths now this is editing the tool properties just for this particular file or just for this particular toolpath when because we use the edit button we're not changing the the size of this cutter in the master tool database just doing it locally so change the flat diameter to be 40 thousand so slightly bigger click OK so now we're going to select the text holding the shift key down select the outer rectangle so now recalculate the toolpath reset the preview double click to preview the results here and now if we say let's look at the first toolpath this is the toolpath using the the the, uh, the larger 40 thousandths flat engraver so we'll say pocket machine preview the results so this is going to show us where the, the larger engraving bit has been able to get in and machine the material away So this is showing us where the the first this is showing us where the stock is being removed from the background when this toolpath has finished previewing we would then change for the smaller cutter so we would change the cutter for our little fine engraving cutter let's just change the background color so we can see that the the first tool hasn't been able to get in and pick out the detail between some of the small lettering if we change the cutter to be our small engraving cutter and preview that toolpath you'll see now that the the software is calculating calculated an additional toolpath to pick out the detail and give us the very fine and precise precision engraved finished result we finished previewing the, that toolpath so now you can see instead of the text being engraved into the plate the text we've removed the material from around the text leaving it raised or proud so a very different type of engraving situation there but uh, very impressive results and again we can experiment with different materials different fill colors etc so we could say okay we're going to cut this out of a uh, piece of bronze and we may just use the material cut fill color so change that to be so different global fill change that to be a, 
a dark blue. Very, very impressive engraving. Once you're happy with the toolpaths, we would then select each toolpath in turn. So you would say select the toolpath, save the toolpath, select the machine that you're going to engrave the project on and save the toolpath. Some of the engraving machines and some of the CNC machines that the software works with will have the option to automatically send the data to the CNC controller. For example, if you're running a, an engrave, a Roland engraver, here we have an option to output direct to the machine. You would select, click the, the button here to select the printer dr driver for the machine. And then once this is set up, instead of saving a separate toolpath, clicking the save button will automatically send the data to the printer driver to initiate the engraver to start, uh, start machining. So again, just to summarize, in our two-dimensional view, we've laid out the, the plaque or the sign, added some different text options, so scale text to fit. We've then entered some additional text at a certain height for each character. And then we've gone away and we've calculated different engraving toolpaths. Thank you for watching the tutorial.